There's a bunch of crazy stories written by the Brothers Grimm. And now you're gonna learn all about them, listening to the Brothers Grimm. Students and scholars... Friends and relations, welcome to the Brothers Dim podcast, in which we, Mike and Phil, discuss the stories of the Brothers Grimm, which were written down in Germany in the early 1800s. My name is Phil. And my name is Mike. And today we are discussing story number 32, Clever Hans, not to be confused with Hansel and Gretel, despite the fact that the the two main characters are Hans and and Gretel and because mom. yeah one clever Hans is much stupider than Hansel <laughs> two these two are not related similar names very different stories but we'll get into that soon enough Mike how are you yes I'm doing pretty all right how about yourself I'm okay I'm well rested actually oh that's now, nice it is as you know a few weeks ago Amanda got COVID ah yes which is one of the reasons we had a, a couple week break because we, <laughs> I suddenly had a lot more responsibilities. Neither I nor my child tested positive. So it was just me and the boy for a little while. I was very tired. And what happened was, so we had never sleep trained our kid. Mm. So nights one and two of when Amanda started isolating, he screamed at me for three or four hours each night. And then after that, I was a, I also had to bring him to daycare and I got very tired <laughs> of that. <laughs> Do you get charged a late fee if you're, if you're not there on time? No. Oh, that's good. But we have to pay for it. Even if I don't bring him there. Yeah. I got sick of that. I, I made the executive decision to sleep train the kid with the cry it out method. Mm. If there are any parents out there listening to us, it's amazing, <laughs> but there's a thing. So the first night he cried for an hour and a half, right? And then he went to sleep. Night number two, cried for 25 minutes. Night number three, 10 minutes. And now it's like five minutes and he's out like a light and he sleeps through the night. And before we would have to rock him to sleep every night. Mm-hmm. And it was, and, and I, and I liked it. Admittedly, I liked having him fall asleep in my arms. Yeah. But, I also did not like the waking up in the middle of the night thing. So I, I you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> I said, Is there... so that's my parenting tip to new parents. It's amazing is sleep training. This, that story that I just told doesn't exactly tie into story number 32, except to say this, you got to teach your kids. <laughs> <laughs> critical thinking is the critical thinking. The lesson of the day. Who are we blaming? Hans's stupidity on here because Hans's mom is clearly didn't do great at the whole parenting thing, I think. Or I mean, I guess you can't exactly blame someone for their kid being a fucking idiot. <laughs> right? But whatever is happening here, it's a it's a it's a very fucking weird one. I think it's I think a, every a, everybody shares some blame here. I think. <laughs> All three characters. <laughs> All three. It's only three it's it's so weird and the 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 way that they write this story down is also really weird yes why do i get um, the weird ones i think the, the last one i narrated was the the louse and the flea <laughs> <laughs> it's the the compounding story where the louse burns herself and then you're playing the a jump rope screams. Game. yeah 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 the 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 rattling bog yeah hi ho the, the, the house bog, down in the dairy yeah. or the house check bug yeah is how that one went. That was, but regardless, now we're in story 32. And again, it's, it's just another weird one. It's all dialogue. Yeah. There's yeah, there, the whole there's thing no... is dialogue. Either, either Jacob dared Wilhelm or, <laughs> or one of them was like, I think I can do a whole story just in dialogue. The other one's like, yeah, I, I don't believe you. Yeah. And it's like, just, <laughs> just, just, just watch me. Very weird. But yes, um, Mike, if you would be so kind, Please take us through the plot of story number 32 from the Brothers Grimm, Clever Hans. A very backhanded title. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so as as discussed, this is told almost entirely in dialogue, uh, and it's a, it's a repeated pattern. There's one chunk that just repeats. So we start, the, the mother of Hans said, 
Where away, Hans? Hans answered, To Gretel. Behave well, Hans. Oh, I'll behave well. Goodbye, mother. Goodbye, Hans. Hans comes to Gretel. Good day, Gretel. Good day, Hans. What do you bring that is good? I bring nothing. I want to have something given to me. Gretel presents Hans with a needle. Hans says, Goodbye, Gretel. Goodbye, Hans. Hans takes the needle, sticks it into the hay cart, and follows the cart home. Good evening, mother. Good evening, Hans. Where have you been? With Gretel. What did you take her? Took nothing. Had something given to me. What did Gretel give you? Gave me a needle. Where is the needle, Hans? Stuck it in the hay cart. That was foolish, Hans. You should have stuck the needle in your sleeve. Never mind. I'll do better next time. And that's the that's the chunk that we repeat. Uh, it repeats the so there's the needle in the haystack. Uh, then he goes and gets a knife um, and puts that in his sleeve because mom told him to, he should have put the needle in his sleeve. Yeah. Uh, she said she put she should have put the knife in your pocket. So he next day goes uh, and gets a goat, puts the goat in his pocket. It suffocates and dies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure about yeah. the physics of that one. <laughs> As someone who's owned goats before, <laughs> you cannot fit them in your pocket. But I digress. Maybe like a bag of holding. I don't know. Yeah. So uh, the should have put that goat on a rope. So the next day he goes and gets a piece of bacon, puts that on a rope, drags it home, gets eaten by dogs on the way. You should have <laughs> put it on your head. Uh, so he you know, he goes the next day to Gretel. Uh, and she gives him a calf. And actually, enter the only smart character in this entire story. He puts the calf on his head. And then it kicks him in the face. <laughs> so yeah. mom, mom says, well, that was a bad idea. Can I tell you uh, real quick? That yeah. So the first line that made me laugh. That one? I'm going to really, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and because the story is so, almost all dialogue and then every once in a while, just like this little sentence. But um, so what it came to was Hans takes the calf, puts it on his head, and the calf kicks his face. Good evening, mother. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that was foolish. Should have brought the cow home on a rope, uh, similar to the goat. So he goes the next day. Gretel gives him herself. So he brings Gretel home on a rope, ties her to the feed trough oh, in the oh barn, <laughs> and goes on in. And mom's like, good evening, Hans. Where have you been with Gretel? What did you take her? Took nothing. Had something given to me. What did Gretel give to you? Herself. Where's Where is Gretel, Hans? I tied her up in the barn. <laughs> well, that was foolish, Hans. You should have. It was, it was quite foolish. <laughs> you should have cast friendly eyes upon her. So he goes to the barn and cuts out all the eyes of the cows and the sheep and throws them at her to cast friendly eyes upon her. Uh, she, she doesn't like this. She gets angry, uh, unties herself and runs away and never becomes his pride. The end. I get it <laughs> <laughs> with the eyes thing. I I, so, I got to that line. I was just like, "What the fuck?" Like the whole thing was just goofy and silly. And then he goes <laughs> and cuts the eyes out of all the livestock and throws them at his betrothed. It turns real sociopathic real quick. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. My my first note is what? Yeah. <laughs> moral. I I have one moral I I want to get to, and then we can oh, get good. into some of the other stuff. I just. Treat you treat your woman right, mm. like because yeah. everything was kind of fine. That and especially like Gretel was fine with his bullshit until he started chucking animal <laughs> eyes. <laughs> she is patient as fuck, including <laughs> fucking for a nice change of pace. By the way, with with bro the brothers Grimm, we have a maiden being sought by a man. And when she realizes how thoughtless he is, <laughs> she kind of sends him packing. And it's one of the few stories that shows the fairy tale maiden deciding her own fate, right? Yeah. Yeah. But doesn't seem to mind. The second to last one is he brings her home. She, he puts a rope around her neck, <laughs> brings her home. And she just That's, goes along with this. She She's goes like, along oh, with it. All right. Maybe she, she likes being tied up and treated like Tied up in the barn. Maybe she likes Cool. puppy play or goat play whatever the fuck is your mom home <laughs> <laughs> down with it though like it's just it's yeah. just so fine with everything yeah. and then um patient but maybe she likes animals when he cuts <laughs> all the eyes out of the animals to cast kind eyes upon her she's like you know what 
you fucking sociopath. That's, that's enough. <laughs> I'm good. I'm out. You're fucking dumb. <laughs> Did you ever read The Giving Tree? Yeah. This it yeah. reminded me of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Except Hans was much stupider than that boy. And that boy was pretty dumb. That boy was self centered. At least the boy was using, knew what he was doing. He's like, I'm going to use the shit out of this tree. That's true. Yeah. No, he, he yeah. built a house and, and all sorts of things. <laughs> In this case, he loses a needle. I guess he gets to keep the knife, kills the goat, loses the piece of bacon to the dogs. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I guess maybe he keeps the calf, but he got kicked in the face for it. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, it's uh, no, the, well, the goat dies. He doesn't have a good track record. Yeah, he does. And, yeah, he kills the goat by putting it in his pocket. And I guess, I mean, goats are also not pocket sized. No, no, they're but, not. But, I mean, unless maybe, had, maybe Hans is a is a giant. I, I, I he's not. an adult. Well, that's the other <laughs> thing. Like, it, like they don't even. So this story, like when I went and started doing research, people were like, "Oh, it's it's losing your your fiance," and they kind of mentioned that at the end. A no part in the beginning, they were like, "Oh, Hans went to his fiance." Yeah, and it's and the, was like it's the dialogue part of that. The very end of the story is <laughs> when they're like, "I'm never gonna be your wife," and he's like, "Oh," and I was like, "What the fuck was that on the table? How <laughs> old are these people?" Yeah, it seemed like maybe like they were six, and this was like silly childhood games. Yeah, just oh, where are you going? Oh, I'm going over to Stacy's house. I'm just gonna get a needle, you know. And then the ATU number, the Arn Thompson index number. 1685 the foolish bridegroom this is her fiance and he's yeah. treating her like he's it's an idiot trope. and yeah. yeah that's the truth it's not mentioned which, until the last line which we don't know because we're not there 150 years ago <laughs> yeah but it, maybe everyone else would have would have known this do you think jacob was like but so i i, I read your version and it never mentions that they are engaged oh, well, well, but the, I, I thought that that would be awkward in the dialogue yeah. Wilhelm, the, the reader yeah, I, will figure it out. We had to we had to fit everything onto one page, <laughs> <laughs> and so I took that zit part out. The All reader right, is from, smart. From now on, you know what I'll tell you: you you can be Jacob, I'll be <laughs> Wilhelm. <laughs> so, well, yeah, there's a couple of ATU types. One also is uh, ATU type one thousand and six casting eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh which my is, god! I hope there are more of these. Oh my god! If you and I. I if we finish, if we finish all of these, the the grim stories, we and and go on to other fairy tales. Yes, then we can find more casting eyes. I don't know if the Grimms did it, but um, but yeah, casting eyes is a enough of a trope that it has its own number. It's a high <laughs> up it. number, but they have it. Yeah, I was curious if you came across the fact that the, I, I read a number of different versions. The version we have ends with "This is ridiculous. I'm never going to marry you." There are a number of versions I read where she says, this is ridiculous, and then marries him. Really weird. Because the the ATU is, well, I, I guess the ATU is the foolish bridegroom. It doesn't necessarily yeah. indicate that he they don't get married. But it, I in the versions that I read, it seems like a 50-50 split of whether or not they actually get married in the end. I think it's interesting, the more we're going through these, that... I don't even know how to phrase this, that maybe the Grimm brothers were forward thinking that they were like, no, okay. If you're that much of an idiot, you don't get the girl despite what you want. And I know, and we think of the brothers Grimm as these crazy stories and, and everything else, but they are working with what they have. But in a lot of instances are, are toning shit down and Jesus giving, at least they, they gave this girl some agency more than she had. So the the first time I saw it, I thought it was a typo. I mean, so our 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 copy, she, she runs away and she's like, "I'm never going to marry you." And then I found a version online where Hans went into the stable, cut out all of the calves and sheep's eyes, and threw them in Gretel's face. Then Gretel became angry, tore herself loose, and ran away and became the bride of Hans. Yeah, it just makes no sense. It, like it look, literally looks like a typo. I it, but, but it, it's not that, the only version. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, very strange bonkers do you have any more notes no it's pretty pretty short on this one okay i do have a pitch for you oh do yeah okay here's my pitch amelia bedelia gets engaged <laughs> <laughs> we take the story love it stop swap the sexes of the people involved uh-huh and for anyone who does not know who amelia bedelia is <laughs> 
You probably should, but Amelia Bedelia is a maid who misunderstands various commands of her employer by taking figures of speech, various terminology, literally, causing her to perform incorrect actions with comical effects. So you can't tell her to dust the furniture. She'll just put dust all over the furniture. You have to tell her to undust the furniture. Knowing that, in the start of the story, Amelia Bedelia announces to her master she's gotten engaged and will be giving her two-week notice. And then everyone gives her advice. For example, um, I like the cast kind eyes on him. And she mutilates a bunch of livestock. Or the children. Or the children. <laughs> throws eyeballs. At, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it mutilates <laughs> the children. Throws their eyeballs at him. Dress well. She puts on a well costume. Like, <laughs> like a, be supportive or build something around him. Refuse to change herself. So she stops changing her clothes and her underwear. And she's disgusting. <laughs> Keep him hooked. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, she keeps him hooked, all right. A meat hook? <laughs> a big old meat hook through the shoulders. <laughs> That's my pitch. I don't think the estate of uh, Peggy Parrish... <laughs> <laughs> well, Probably not use... a sponsor anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to be our sponsor. They're not going to let me use the Amelia Bedelia character. Ooh, um, but she, when when does it hit public domain? Because Winnie the Pooh was immediately turned into a horror movie as soon as that happened, remember? Yeah, no, <laughs> well, fuck it. I'll do a Google search. <laughs> First, Amelia Bedelia book. 1963. So, no. Ooh, yeah. That's going to be, we got 90 years on that. 2040. We can <laughs> make it. We can make it. We can. Yeah. You can. You and I could be alive. <laughs> we could be. We could be filmmakers by then. At that point, we, like, yeah, we, <laughs> we could if be we're gonna, alive. We're, yeah, that's thirty years. Well, we'll be. We'll be alive. I, I I'm hope. Not, I hope we're alive in our seventies. No, we're alive. Yeah. No, I'm not saying we shouldn't be, but like at that point, I'm gonna. I, I don't want to. Start. <laughs> May not be my top priority. <laughs> yeah, I'm just. Yeah. I, I I really like the idea of an Amelia Bedelia horror movie where it starts off light with like comically you know just misinterpreting advice yeah. and it turns you know slowly turns into like her betrothed on a meat hook yeah <laughs> into children's eyes the cast of kind eyes on him that was what reminded me of amelia bedelia when when i was reading this yeah i think because i'm i've started buying a lot of different books for the boy and i mm. i have a list of Ooh. everything i loved as a little kid ah and these stories, and I, I'm wondering, and, and one of them was, and that was kind of like a, a school scholastic book fair thing was Amelia Bedelia. But that, mm -hmm. like Judy Bloom books, uh, uh, was it Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing? I, you know, mm -hmm. I have these lists of things, and uh, but Amelia how to Bedelia, eat fried I was, worms, how to eat fried worms, amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you I remember like, Chip? Chip, no, it was a, it was a, it was a series about a scientist dad who created a robot teenage boy <laughs> and sent him to high school oh boy I get, i'm getting a big thumbs up from my wife <laughs> there was he remembers it it was chip it was like it was an acronym for something i and and computer chips too i remember something similar there was a me, small wonder yep yeah no it was, it was i think small wonder may have ripped it off or or the other way around yeah <laughs> small wonder was creepy but she had this kind of dead-eyed stare and at times looked a little marionette-ish. Uh, the whole thing was creepy. The best was when they had the drug episode and the, the robot fucking took a bunch of speed <laughs> and <laughs> flapped her hands so fast that she was flying. She was like, I'm getting high. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that episode at all. Oh, it was amazing. And the cops was it, were like, was it a very special episode? It was a very special episode, but like, like it made no goddamn sense. And the cops, the cops went to the the kid her brother the real kid and we're like would you like to be an undercover police agent for us and like you're gonna have help us catch this drug dealer the drug dealer also was 12 the, the kid <laughs> was course. like the robot was doing all the drugs the kid was like yeah no this is all makes a lot of sense to me like the parents were i don't jesus christ it was fucking crazy anyways oh shit oh it was called yeah. not quite human that's what the series was called well it sounds awesome and I'm going to put it on a list of the cool things to read to my son. And maybe Chip will have some similarities to quote unquote clever Hans. <laughs> so 
Anyway. Anyways. <laughs> that has been story number 32. Clever Hans. Sleep tight. And we'll see you next time. See you next time.